Psychological gratification is the usual motive for serial killing, and many serial murders involve sexual contact with the victim. The Federal Bureau of Investigation states that the motives of serial killers can include anger, thrill-seeking, financial gain, and attention-seeking, and killings may be executed as such. The victims may have something in common. For example, demographic profile, appearance, gender or race. Often the FBI will focus on a particular pattern serial killers follow. Based on this pattern, this will give key clues into finding the killer along with their motives. Although a serial killer is a distinct classification that differs from that of a mass murderer, spree killer, or contract killer, there exist conceptual overlaps between them. Some debate exists on the specific criteria for each category especially with regard to the distinction between spree killers and serial killers. Amongst the most horrific serial killers in the history of human nature, was Peter Thomas Anthony. Peter Thomas Anthony Manuel was born in New York on March 15, 1926 to Scottish parents. Five years later, in 1932, the family returned to Scotland and set up home in Motherwell. By the age of 10 Manuel was considered a juvenile delinquent and served his first term in custody at age 15 for sexual assault. In 1946 Manuel attacked and raped a woman for which he served nine years in Scotland's Peterhead prison. On release in 1953 he moved to Glasgow, where his parents now lived. Manuel was fascinated by American gangsters and perhaps sought to emulate them. The 5 foot 4 inch tall Manuel had a girlfriend, Anna O'Hara, and was due to marry her on the 30th of July 1955. Fortunately for Anna she decided to break off the engagement when she found out about his criminal record. Sadly on that same day Manuel took out his anger on 29-year-old Mary McLaughlin, whom he abducted and threatened to kill by decapitating her. She was able to escape him and his sexual advances and would be the only later victim to live to testify against him. Manuel's killing spree began on the night of the 2nd of January 1956 when he followed 17-year-old Anne Neelance onto a golf course in East Kilbride, near where he was working at the time as a gas fitter. There he raped her and battered her to death with an iron bar. As a known sex offender Manuel was questioned but released without charge after his father provided him with an alibi. Although he later confessed to Anne's murder he was not convicted of it. On the 17th of September 1956 Manuel broke into the home of Marion Watt in the High Burnside district of Glasgow. Marion, 45, her sister, Margaret, 41, and Marion's 16-year-old daughter Vivian, were all shot in their beds and Vivian sexually assaulted. Manuel was on bail at this time for a burglary. Marion's husband, William, was initially charged with the killings, but was released two months later for lack of evidence. He had been away on a fishing trip on the night in question. Manuel then served an 18-month prison sentence for burglary and was released in November 1957 to resume killing. His next victim was 36-year-old taxi driver Sidney Dunn, who was murdered on the 8th of December in Newcastle on Tyne, where Manuel was looking for work. Mr. Dunn was shot in the head and then had his throat slit. By the time Dunn's body was discovered on the Northumbria Moor Line, Manuel had returned to Lanarkshire. Northumbria police attended his trial and would have charged him with this murder had he been acquitted of the Scottish killings. 
17-year-old Isabel Cook was abducted on the 28th of December 1957 as she went out to meet her boyfriend at a nearby bus stop to go to a dance at Uddingston Grammar School. Isabel was raped and then strangled. Her body was buried in a field and would only be discovered when Manuel pointed out the spot to police. In the early hours of January the 1st, 1958, Manuel broke into the Uddingston home of the Smart family. Here he shot Peter and Doris Smart and their 10-year-old son Michael. Manuel stayed in the house for a week, living on the Smart's food, and surprisingly looked after their cat. 45-year-old Peter Smart had some cash in new banknotes in the house which he was saving for a family holiday. Manuel took the Smart's car and strangely gave a lift to a policeman looking into Isabel Cook's death. Although many police officers who were familiar with Manuel suspected him of carrying out these murders, they were unable to prove his guilt until shortly after they had searched the Smart's residence and retraced their movements in the hours before their murder. When seven five-pounds banknotes Peter Smart was known to have withdrawn from his bank on New Year's Eve were found to be missing from his residence, and Manuel had been discovered to be using these same banknotes to pay for drinks in several East End Glasgow pubs. After the police arrested his father, Peter Manuel confessed to eight of these murders and provided incriminating information only the perpetrator could have known. A bartender in a pub became suspicious of Manuel when he paid for rounds of drinks using new banknotes. This was in the days before ATM machines when new notes were not a common sight. This led to Manuel's arrest on the 13th of January 1958. Police were able to identify the banknotes as belonging to Peter Smart. Additionally police had letters written to William Watts, while the latter was on remand, containing details that only the killer could have known. Manuel confessed to eight murders while in custody. Manuel came to trial at the Glasgow High Court before Mr. Justice Cameron on the 12th to the 29th of May 1958. Here he pleaded not guilty and withdrew his confession, claiming it was extracted under coercion. He was represented by Harold Leslie, W.R. Greve and A.M. Morrison, but on the ninth day of the trial dismissed them and decided to conduct his own defense. It took the jury just two and a half hours to convict him of seven murders. Mr. Justice Cameron directed them to acquit Manuel on the charge of killing Anne Nylands. The original execution date was set for the 19th of June but this had to be postponed, pending the hearing of Manuel's appeal on the 24th and 25th of June. This was dismissed at a new date of Friday the 11th of July set. Manuel now tried to feign insanity as he sat on his bed in Barlini's condemned suite. He refused to talk to the death watch warders and just listen to the radio he had been allowed to have. As a Catholic he was also permitted the ministrations of Father Smith. He was visited by his mother. Bridget and on one of her latter visits, in the presence of Father Smith, she became enraged at his behavior and slapped him across the face, telling him you can't fool me. At 8 a.m. on Friday the 11th of July 1958, Harry Allen, assisted by Harold Smith, led Manuel the few paces from his cell to the gallows. Manual last words were turn up the radio and I'll go quietly. The execution took just 8 seconds to carry out and 24 seconds after the drop Manuel was certified dead by Dr. David Anderson. The prison's medical officer. His body was taken down at 8.35 a.m. and placed in an open coffin for the inquest held at 9.30 a.m. before Sheriff Alan Walker. 
Father Smith conducted a burial service later that day, and Manuel was interred in an unmarked grave near the wall of D. Hall. In 2008 it was claimed by Dr. Richard Goldberg, a reader in law at Aberdeen University, that evidence about Manuel's mental state was suppressed during his trial and a subsequent review of his case. Electroencephalograph evidence indicating suffering from frontal lobe epilepsy was to be presented at the trial, but was not because Manuel decided against introducing it after he took over his defense. Whether the jury would have found this evidence amounted to diminished responsibility is something we will never know. Manuel was the third to last criminal to be executed in Scotland. Anthony Miller followed Manuel on to the Barlini Gallows in December 1960, and Henry John Burnett was executed at Criginch's Prison, Aberdeen, in August 1963. He was 31 years at the time of his execution. Thank you for watching Death Row.